Hello, it's Thursday. Have you forgotten the feeling that you've forgotten something? I basically realized halfway through doing my supersized September, as I started thinking about Halloween patterns, that I had forgotten to kind of finish something off. So we had our griffin and we had our pegasus, but I had mentioned that I thought that there should be a third friend in the gang, you know, maybe something that uses some of the same techniques. I got a lot of really helpful suggestions from the comments, but the one that I liked the best was the phoenix. So that's what we're going to be making this week. For me, she kind of occupies that weird midpoint between maybe a Moltres and a Fero. But can I just say, I think she came a really long way from the burning chicken she was to start with. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about tools and materials. To make your Phoenix today, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in three main colours. So you're going to need a colour for your beak and your feet, and then a main base colour and an accent colour. So I'll be using black, orange, and yellow for mine, respectively. You're also going to need a pair of 9mm safety eyes, and they are the same sized eye that we used on both the Griffin and the Pegasus. So all three will have matching eyes. You will need a 3.5mm hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, and a couple of bobby pins to use as stitch markers. And I actually recommend long straight bobby pins over the safety pin style stitch marker for this particular use case, but uh, use whichever you're comfortable with and some stuffing, but that's it. Okay, so a written version of today's pattern will be provided to my patrons and will also be listed in my Etsy. I will leave a link to both in the description down below for anyone who's interested. Now, I'm also going to release a bundle of all three of them just because they use a lot of the same techniques and the three kind of go together. You might be able to get a bit of a deal on all of them. Okay, so one thing that you might notice from today's pattern is that we are drawing on techniques that we used to make both the Griffin and the Pegasus. So, Notably, the wings are a larger version of the wing that we've used for the previous two projects. The legs, up to a certain point, are based heavily on our eagle claw, with the top part of the leg based really heavily on the haunch of the pegasus. And then we also have the way our beak is attached is the same way we've done the beak on the griffin. So there's like a lot of related techniques, but I really would recommend probably starting with one of these two and then doing this one here afterwards. Okay, so today we're going to start by making this main head, body, and tail piece, because that is all one piece. So we start at the top of the head, we build out a bit of a framework for the beak, then continue on down into the body, narrowing off to where we would normally finish off, but then expanding back out to form our tail. So that's what we're going to do now, so you should grab the main base colour you've chosen, which for me is this orange. So the first two rows are pretty self-explanatory, they are just a magic ring of six. and then six increases around to get us up to 12 stitches in total. Just like that. So in row three, we'll be working six increases along one side and then six single crochet along the other. That is because on one side of the head, we want it to just grow taller and not wider, and on the other side of the head we need it to grow wider and taller. So that is where we put our increases. So there we go. Now in the next three rows we're going to be laying the foundation for our beak. Now if you remember with the griffin, what we do is we work a certain number of stitches in the back loops only, leaving the front loops free so we can attach into when we make this. We will also be using our bobby pins to mark those columns of stitches. So say exactly the same way we did with the griffin, but we're going to go through it again today. So we're going to start by working 12 single crochet around to get to where we want our beak to be. Just like so. We're then going to work the next three stitches in the back loops only. So when you look directly down at the stitches, you'll note that you've got a loop on the side facing you, that is your front loop, and you've got a loop on the side facing away from you, that is your back loop. So we are going to work three single crochet, inserting our hook through the back loop only. Just like so. And they're going to work three single crochet through both loops to finish off our round and get back to where we started. So what you should be able to see there is we've left these three front loops free. So what I'm going to do is take my bobby pin and use it to mark the front loop on one side, 
skip the front loop we've left free in the middle and use my other bobby pin to mark the front loop on the other side. That's just because with those two marked, we're very easily going to be able to find that one, but you can also mark it if you, if you like. So that is the first row of our big foundation done. So we're moving on to row five. So once again, we're going to work 12 single crochet around. Like so. I'm then going to work one single crochet through the back loop only one single crochet through both loops, another single crochet through the back loop only, and then three single crochet through both loops to finish the row. So in that row there, we left it just two front loops free. So I'm going to take my bobby pin out and use it to mark both of those. And do the same thing on the other side. So basically we're marking them as little columns on either side of a square. And we have one more row to work to finish off this big foundation. So again, start with 12 single crochet around. Like so, then work three single crochet through the back loops only. And then three single crochet through both loops to finish the round. So we're going to move our bobby pins just one more time. And we're going to use them this time to pick up all three front loops in the little column that we've made. So what you should be able to see there is this little square of loops and that is what we'll be using to join our beak on later. So before we go any further we're just going to stop and insert our eyes because we actually have everything we need already to position them and this opening is only getting narrower from here on out. So if you grab your eyes, they're going to go into row three. So count down three rows of stitches. So one, two, three. Now when I say into, what I really mean is after. So, one, so follow row three around until you hit one side of your beak. Count one stitch and then insert your eye. So basically what we want is one full stitch visible between where our eye goes and where our beak is going to go. So that's that on that side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So just like that, I'm then going to just check that they are even, not crooked, and that I like the way they look from all angles. You of course have to imagine a beak sticking out the front, and I'm happy with those, so I'm just going to snap my backs on now. So now basically what we're going to do is work up the next 12 rows of the head and body, loading our decreases along areas where we want it to curve inwards, and increases along places we want it to curve outwards, until we get to the widest point of the body. And then working six more rows to narrow us off to the narrow point at the base of the tail, stuffing as we go. Okay, so there we are at the end of the body and note that I'm not finishing off. Now is your kind of like your last little chance to stuff as much as you can into the body. Because from here on out, we're going to be building up this flat plane of the tail and there'll be no more stuffing sort of entering the bird. So when you are happy that your chicken is fully loaded, Grab your hook again, and we're going to start expanding this out to form our tail. So now that's the base of our tail. And what we want to do is seal this opening and do our first layer of feathers here. So looking at these little shells, that's what we're going to be doing next. So noting that we're not adding any stuffing to this tail. So squish that opening flat so that the stitch we've just done is our edge. And then chain one. So the first thing we're going to do is in our back loops only, pick up the back loop of the next stitch we were going to work into and the back loop or inner loop in this case of the stitch we just did. And that can be a little bit fiddly, but that is why we chain one. And I'm going to work a slip stitch. And from there, it's a matter of just pairing up the inner loop stitches. So in the next pair of stitches, so one from the layer facing me and one from the layer facing away from me, both on the inside. I'm going to work five single crochet, all in that same pair of stitches. Just like that. Then in the next pair of inner loops, I'm going to put a slip stitch. And that is our first feather. So we're going to repeat that two more times. So we start with a slip stitch five single crochet into the same pair. Then slip stitch, slip stitch, five single crochet into the same pair. Then 
and slip stitch through that final pairing and finish off. So we are going to be adding another row of feathers, but we'll be reattaching our yellow in order to do that. So for now, you can just tuck this end away inside. And there is your head, body and tail base for your phoenix. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to attach his beak. So that beak is worked around the stitches that we already have on our head. I'm going to grab black for mine, but you can of course use whatever color you like. The first thing you need to do is identify when you're looking directly at the square, the front loop in the lower left hand corner, and you're going to join your yarn into that one there. Now I do want to say that I always join using a standing single crochet, but you can also slip stitch, chain one, and then single crochet over the top to get the same effect. So I'm going to remove this bobby pin for now. So there is my standing single crochet. We're basically going to work in a clockwise direction around these loops to create our first row, which should be eight single crochet around. So the next one I'm going to work in is the next one up in that first column. Then the one on the top left, rotate it. It's now the middle one in the top row. Remove your second bobby pin. We're going to do the top right, middle right, bottom right hand corner, there should be just one loop remaining in the middle bottom and we'll get that one too. So there is the foundation for your beak. Because this is quite a long beak, we're going to work another row of eight single crochet around. And from there, we're going to work four rows with one decrease in each row to narrow us down to a point. Just like so, and then we're going to finish off. And with this little bit of a tail, I'm going to identify the front loops of the remaining stitches around the beak and just pull it through all four of them and pull it tight to close it off and tuck that away inside the beak. Give it a little pinch to straighten it out and there is your beaked phoenix. So she's only getting more dangerous from here on out because we've got what claws and fire to add. At this point I am actually going to stop and take a moment to stitch on a little bit of yellow on each of the eyelids just because once we add the feathers it feels really like finicky to try and touch it and do much with it so any kind of fine details you want to add now is a good time to do it. So pop your needle and yarn to one side we'll need it again later but not for now. So there we go I've added a couple of little eyelashes or eyebrows however you want to think about them. For some reason I'm always so much better at doing the ones that go on the right than I am on the ones that do at the left. Yeah you see look Great, perfect, exactly what I want them to look like, and kind of wonky. It's just, why? Why is there a difference? Why is it always the same side? Okay, so before we pop this piece to one side, we have one more thing to do to it, and that is to add his tail feathers. So you can see there from underneath that they actually attach to the front loops that we left free as we made our shells, and we make them by reattaching with our yellow, or whatever accent color you have selected at this point in time. I actually think this might be a very pretty pattern to see all in white or something like that. It's very stork or crane. So because there's the rest of the bird attached, it's pretty easy to work out which way up the tail is supposed to go. But we are going to work these tail feathers with the beak facing towards us and the rest of the tail pointing away. So we're accessing these front loops that are underneath the tail. And you are going to find that free front loop that is closest to the right hand side, for me I'm right handed, and slip stitch into it to join on your accent colour, just like that. So we're going to be working seven feathers in total across the base of this, and they are all worked the same basic way but with differing heights. So the first one we are going to chain four, just like so. We're going to turn and then starting in the second chain from our hook, work three single crochet back down the feather. Like so. We're then going to find our next front loop along 
and slip stitch into it. So it pulls that feather up and into place. And that's basically it. So the next feather is a little bit bigger, so we're going to start by chaining six. So turn, once again starting in the second chain from our hook, and work five single crochet down the length of the chains. Find the next front loop along and slip stitch into it. So if yours are a little bit sort of crooked or crumply, you just give the tips of them a little bit of a tug and they stand up nice and straight. So there we have a chain four feather and a chain six feather. So working our way along, we are now going to make a chain eight feather, a chain 10 feather, which is our feature feather in the middle. Then we're going to do another chain eight and then a chain six and then a chain four and finish off. So we're just going to tuck both of these ends into the tail and the final reveal. Ta-da! So there is his fancy little fan of a tail. Now you of course aren't restricted to using the exact same feather lengths that I've used. You should go with what feels right. You can even sort of get some color changes in there. Just reattach for each, each feather if you wanted like a little spectrum or rainbow effect. So now we can place this whole kind of little birdie piece to one side. And next up we're going to be making his legs. Okay, so next up we are going to make his little drumsticks. So I'm going to be using black for mine, but you should grab whatever color you want to use for your beak and feet. And we start, as these things most often do, with a magic ring of six. My apologies for the black, I just did, I genuinely thought it was the best color for this particular piece, for this particular creation. So we have six stitches around there. And then in our next row, we are going to be creating his claws. So we're doing this the exact same way we did for the griffin, with three claws at the front and one claw at the back. You should be kind of able to see that there, but they are black on this one, which makes it a little bit trickier. So the way we do that is by using my favorite stitch combo, which is of course the triple crochet in the front loop and then slip stitch into the back loop of the same stitch. So for anybody who needs to know, triple crochet is when you yarn over your hook twice, insert your hook through the stitch, and in this case, that is just the front loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, which should leave you with four loops on your hook, then yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So there is your triple crochet, fold that forward, and insert your hook through the back loop of that same stitch and you're going to slip stitch into it. Now what you should hopefully be able to see there is that gives you this little bobble that's going to act as our claw. So there is our first one and we are going to do that exact same thing in the next two stitches. So triple crochet into the front loop and slip stitch into the back loop. So there is our second claw and we're going to do our third one. So triple crochet in the front loop so, and slip stitch into the back loop of the same stitch. So there are his three front claws. So now we are just going to single crochet into both loops of the next stitch. Like so, and then we're going to work the claw at the back of the foot, which we work the exact same way. So triple crochet in the front loop. Slip stitch into the back loop. And you should have one stitch left in your round and you're going to just put a single crochet into it. I'm using my fingers here to help sort of exaggerate where those stitches are so you can see them, but there we are. So we've got our three claws for the front and our one claw for the back. So from here on out, there's nothing really fancy going on. But in the next row, you do need to be careful not to work any stitches into the slip stitches from the previous round. So basically we're going to put a single crochet into each triple crochet and single crochet from row two, which should leave you with six in total. So it's the three across the front, the one down the side, one at the back, and one up the other side. So there we go. So there is our little stompy foot. And now we're going to be working up the leg. So the construction of this leg is pretty simple. We have four more rows of six single crochet to get us up to where we want this kind of inverted knee joint. And then we're going to use some decreases and increases to kind of help our leg bend in the direction that we want it to. So start by working four more rows of six single crochet around. So just like that, we are then going to work a decrease, a single crochet, 
and then two increases at the front. And then a single crochet to finish the round. So your round should have seven stitches in it at the moment. We are then going to work a decrease and then five single crochet around. Just like so. Okay, so we have just one row to go in our black and that is six single crochet around. And we are going to change colors in the final stitch. So work the first five. And then grab your accent color. I'm choosing yellow to do my little drumstick because I like the contrast with the body, but you could also just use your main body color for this bit if you prefer. So this is the final stitch in row 10 that we're going to be doing our color change in. So you start by inserting your hook through the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop, just like you would for any other single crochet. Hold your old color out of the way, grab your new color, and we're gonna pinch that at the base of the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. And just like that, you'll have a finished single crochet in your black with your accent color on the hook ready to go. So the rest of this piece will be worked in our yellow. So you can choose to tie these two pieces off and, and trim them short and tuck them away inside the leg. So now we are ready to work up the drumstick. So the first row of this is actually front post. Single. So the first row of this is six front post single crochet around. Now I believe this is the only time this comes up in this entire pattern, but front post is when you work around the post of the stitch instead of through the loops of the stitch. So because it's front post stitching, we are going to insert our hook from the front of the piece around the post back to the front of the piece. You yarn over and bring up a loop and then you finish your single crochet as per usual. So you're going to work six of those in total around the top of the leg. All right, just like so. So if you find you're having trouble doing that because the piece is very small or you just don't like doing front post stitching, you can replace that row with just six regular single crochet. You'll just basically get a zigzag transition between your two colors instead of a nice flat transition between your two colors. And hey, you might like that better as well. So now we are just going to work up the next six rows to finish off the drumstick. Please note that we are not stuffing this piece at all. So now we are swapping back to working through both loops and we're going to work the next six rows to finish building up the drumstick. Please note, we are not stuffing this piece at all. Now, sorry guys, I kind of lapsed into autopilot there. Basically I finished off the top and then I used the tail to weave the little opening shot, just as we did with the beak and how we've done it with many other pieces before in the past. I just kind of, I don't know, zoned out for a second a little too hard. But there is your finished drumstick and of course these things are better in pairs. Okay, so we wanna like, can can these over to the other side of the screen and we are going to make his wings. So as mentioned, these wings are just a larger version of the same ones that we've done for the Pegasus and the Griffin. I think I've mentioned that like four times this video. So just in case you, that you missed that, larger version, same wings. So we're going to start with your base color, which for me is orange. So we're basically going to start by working up a pancake that is 18 single crochet around. So just like that. And then we're going to work one more row around to get up to 24 single crochet, but we're going to work it entirely in our back loops. So you should be able to see that we've got a whole ring of front loops left free from the previous round. That is just a decoration. We just like the way that that looks on the larger wing because it gives it a little bit more texture. Okay, so now for the transformative fun part, what you're going to do is fold the sides of your piece together like a little taco then you're going to chain one to give yourself a little bit of room to play with and then we're going to build up some little petals on the inside of the wing so just the same way as we did with the tail but at a different scale if that makes sense so to start with we are going to pick up the back loop only of the next stitch in the round then we're going to contort ourselves around to pick up the back loop of the stitch we just did so that is your first pair of stitches and we are going to start by putting three single crochet into that pair of stitches. So all into the same stitch, just like that. You are then going to find your next pair of stitches. Again, make sure that, that you're using the inside loops only, leaving the outer loops free. And slip stitch. So there is our first one, and we're actually going to repeat that four more times along the edge of this wing to create five little petals in total. So you see there we've got five little petals along the top. Just going to stop for a second and tuck this end in. So that's just where from our starting tail. 
And you should note you have two pairs of stitches left and you're going to slip stitch into each of them. There we go and finish off because we will rejoin with our accent color. So that's sort of the base of the wing. So now just like where we did the tail, we're going to reattach and add some longer accent feathers to it. Now the trick to these wings is that you need to create a left wing and a right wing. So that means that you'll need to add the feathers once with the little frill facing away from you and once with the little frill facing towards you. Okay, so on camera today, I'm going to show the version with the frill facing away from me. So I'll be working in these ones here, but just know that the exact same pattern applies when you work the ones facing towards you. So we're going to start by identifying the front loop closest to where we finished off and slip stitching into it to join our accent color. Like so, so that is our first slip stitch. We are going to work two more of those along that round of front loops. So just like that, we've worked three in total. Now this is the base of the wing that will be attached to the body later. And from here, we're just going to be building up feathers the exact same we did for the tail. So we start with three chain five feathers. We then work three chain seven feathers and we finish off with two chain nine feathers that are nice and long. So there is our final feather. So we've also done the slip stitch that comes after and then we just need to do one more slip stitch to help anchor that feather straight with the top of the wing. So what I just do is insert my hook between the stitches on top and give a final slip stitch to anchor it down and finish off. So take a moment to tuck your ends in like so and see how my feathers are all crumply. We're just going to give each one a little tug to help them stand out a little bit more straight. You can give them a spritz with hairspray or starch if you have either of those lying around. You can block them as well if you want to really give them some staying power. I found as long as you're not touching them, they tend to just sort of stay. But with this guy, I've been moving him around a lot and showing him on camera, so he's gotten a little scraggly. So there is your first finished wing, and we are, of course, going to need two of them. Like so. They make a happy little sunflower when put together. Pop those to one side. Okay, so the last little piece that we have to make is just his little head plume, which I am also going to make in our accent color here, this yellow. So this piece is really easy and quite free form to make, and it's kind of an optional piece, but I think I like it. I think it gives him sort of a little bit of gravitas. So start by chaining seven. So just like that, got our little chain. And we are going to turn and start in the second chain from our hook, slip stitch in the next three chains. So one, two, and three. We are then going to work a single crochet and then a half double crochet, which is when you yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then we are going to put six double crochet into this last chain. So a double crochet is when you yarn over once, insert into the little opening we'll be working into, yarn over and pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the next two loops. So that's our first double. And I'm gonna work five more of those. Just like that. So note that I've used those to completely turn our piece so that the next stitches presented to us are the back loops of the chains that we made. So then working from right to left, we are going to put in a half double crochet, a single crochet, and then three slip stitches to get back to our starting point. And finish off. So there is our little crowning glory. So now we've made all of our pieces, all we have left to do is assemble our fiery chicken. So I'm going to start with the head plume because it's kind of an obvious piece. So you take a flat end of it and you center that on top of the beak. You need a little pumpkin turtle for the assist. So just like that. Now I tend to sew mine down just up to the end of where we did our slip stitches so the rest of it kind of sticks upwards but you can sew yours all the way down flat or you can sew yours down so that just the very end of it kicks up. It's just a matter of personal preference. 
So I might just pin mine down to that point there. Make sure that it's nice and even on all sides. Then we're going to take some of our yellow and stitch that on. I've been a bit rough with mine, so I haven't got a super nice join there between the, the sort of crowning piece and the beak, but I am just going to leave it for now. I can finesse it a bit later if I want. So next up, we are going to pin on both the legs and the wings because they kind of help position each other. Okay, so <laughs> kind of miscalculated here because we are counting down to where the rest of the pieces go, but I have a fix for you. So we know that we inserted our eyes in round three. So if you follow round three around to the back, then count down an additional 10 rows to find row 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I am so good at counting, guys. Uh, and I'm just going to mark that row real quick. So round 13 is where our wings are going to go. So keep in mind that the long feathers point away from the body. And we've got this kind of little base piece to point towards the body. You are going to pin your wings to row 13. Now you can pin them so that they face forwards if you like. You can get sort of a nice pose that way. We can pin them so that they're a little bit more sideways. You can pin them so they're back a little bit further if you want them kind of in a more peaceful position. But in all situations, the base of them kind of goes at row 13. So I'm just going to start by chucking a couple of pins in there. I'm just pinning it sort of to the top of the side with three or four stitches in between them across the shoulder blades. And I'll leave mine there for now, though I'll probably end up going... No, I won't. I won't leave mine there. I'll pin mine a little bit more upright than that. So like so. Then we're going to grab our legs. So keeping in mind that the three claw side of the foot faces forward and the knee points backwards, you are going to line the point of that up with the, where you've pinned the base of your wing. Now, this is just a starting position for your legs. You're probably going to have to move them around to find a place you're happy with them because they're kind of an odd looking piece. So you can have your bird so that it stands that way, or you can have this tilted further back. And keep in mind that the tail is going to help in balance. So in this one here, I'm going to tilt mine back a little bit more. Whereas you'll note on my original, I had it a little bit more up and down. So we've got up and down and then tilted back in a more upright position as well. So you can kind of play with this. So what I do is I just pin it once so that the top corner of that leg meets the base of the wing and then pivot it as see fit. If you were hanging it, you could even have it sort of outstretched to the front there like a bird of prey. So I'm going to pivot mine back. And then a triangle is the strongest shape. Da -da. Turn it over. Do the same thing on the other side. So with these feathers all finagled, I'm going to give him a little standing test. Magic. There's no supports of any kind in here. You could always, of course, put pipe cleaners in the legs if you feel the need. But uh, just love it when I can make yarn defy gravity. I am going to tilt mine a little bit further forward just so he can balance slightly better. But in general, I'm pretty happy with that. I love a good cheating tail. Okay, so he does have to sort of rock back on his heels a little bit to balance, but I am still happy with that. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow and we're gonna sew around the top of each of the thighs and a little bit of my orange and I'm gonna really firmly secure the base of each wing to the body as well. So that's what we're gonna just do now. So this is my first real attempt at a bird, other than like the odd uh, stumpy owls. So I, uh, how do you guys think I went? <laughs> Should I do more birds in future? I kind of like them, but then they're also kind of very like lots of pieces to them. Which does make it assembly a little bit more interesting. And there is your finished phoenix. Now, I hope you had fun making her with me today. From next week onwards, we will be working on a couple of Halloween patterns. I've got a few things in the mix, including the rest of the skeleton that we made the skull to a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, basically you can watch out for that. And other than that, I will see you next week. Okay, bye. Or so maybe if like, Firo was particularly rude to a Charizard. <laughs>